In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Coming together as God's family with confidence, let us ask the Father's forgiveness, for he is full of gentleness and compassion. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to the Father and to one another. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You heal the wounds of our sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You intercede for us with the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. O God, strength of those who hope in you, graciously hear our pleas. And since without you, mortal frailty can do nothing, grant us always the help of your grace, that in following your commands, we may please you by our resolve and our deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Kings. This is what happened when the Lord took Elijah up to heaven in the whirlwind. Elijah and Elisha set out from Gilgal. Elijah, Elijah said, Elisha, please stay here. The Lord is only sending me to the Jordan. But he replied, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. And they went on together. <clears throat> Fifty of the Brotherhood of Prophets followed them, halting some distance away as the two of them stood beside the Jordan. Elijah took his cloak, rolled it up, and struck the water, and the water divided to left and right, and the two of them crossed over dry shod. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Make your request. What can I do for you before I am taken away from you? Elisha answered, Let me inherit a double share of your spirit. Your request is a difficult one, Elijah said. If you see me while I am being taken from you, it shall be as you ask. If not, it will not be so. Now as they walked on, talked as they went, a chariot of fire appeared and horses of fire coming between the two of them, and Elijah went up to heaven in the whirlwind. Elisha saw it and shouted, My father, my father, chariot of Israel and its chargers. Then he lost sight of him, and taking hold of his clothes, he tore them in half. He picked up the cloak of Elijah, which had fallen, and went back and stood on the bank of the Jordan. He took the cloak of Elijah and struck the water. Where is the Lord, the God of Elijah, he cried. He struck the water, and it divided to right and left, and Elisha crossed over. The word of the Lord. The response is, let your hearts take comfort, all who hope in the Lord. Let your hearts take comfort, all who hope in the Lord. How great is the goodness, Lord, that you keep for those who fear you that you show to those who trust you in the sight of men. Let your hearts take comfort, all who hope in the Lord. You hide them in the shelter of your presence from the plotting of men. You keep them safe within your tent from disputing tongues. Let your hearts take comfort, all who hope in the Lord. Love the Lord, all you saints. He guards his faithful 
but the Lord will repay to the full those who act with pride. And let your hearts take comfort, all who hope in the Lord. We acclaim the Gospel. Alleluia, alleluia. All who love me will keep my words, and my Father will love them, and we will come to them. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, Be careful not to parade your good deeds before people to attract their notice. By doing this, you will lose all reward from your Father in heaven. So when you give alms, don't have it trumpeted before you. This is what the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets to win people's admiration. I tell you, they have had their reward. But when you give alms, your left hand must not know what your right is doing. Your alms giving must be secret. Your father who sees all that is done in secret will reward you. When you pray, don't imitate the hypocrites. They love to say their prayers standing up in the synagogues and at the street corners for people to see them. I tell you, they have had their reward. When you pray, go to your private room. And when you have shut your door, pray to your father who is in that secret place. And your Father who sees all that is done in secret will reward you. When you fast, don't put on a gloomy look, as the hypocrites do. They pull long faces to let people know they are fasting. I tell you solemnly, they have had their reward. When you fast, put oil on your head, wash your face, so that no one will know you are fasting, except your father. He sees all that is done in secret. And your father who sees all that is done in secret will reward you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. May the words of the Gospel wipe away our sins. Today's first reading is from the Old Testament book of Ecclesiastic, Ecclesiasticus and our passage focuses on two famous prophets of the Old Testament, Elijah and Elisha. And in the reading today, Elijah is passing on the mantle to his disciple Elisha. Most people, if they were asked to say what a prophet did, would probably say, that a prophet was someone who foretold the future. And sometimes the Old Testament prophets did do that, but foretelling the future wasn't their main, main defining characteristic. Rather, the Old Testament prophets saw themselves as messengers from God, as having a vocation, a calling from God to speak to the people on God's behalf. The prophets Elijah and Elisha lived in the 9th century BC, so about 3,000 years ago. Elisha was Elijah's disciple and his eventual successor as the public conscience of Israel. Elijah and Elisha constantly called the Jewish people to be faithful to God and not to fall into idol worship and the worshipping of false gods. And they're celebrated in our reading today. And in the reading tomorrow, we have some descriptions of both Elijah and Elisha. Elijah, we're told, was someone who dragged down kings to destruction and high dignitaries from their beds. We're told of Elisha that throughout his life, no ruler could shake him. 
and no one could subdue him. No task was too hard for him, and in his lifetime he performed wonders. So both were obviously impressive figures, people not to be trifled with. By the example of their lives, they invite us to be faithful to God's presence in our lives and to acknowledge God as our Father, as Jesus invites us to do when he taught us the prayer which we know as the Our Father. Blessed to you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Lord, wash away our iniquity and cleanse us from our sin. Let us pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, to the praise and glory of God's name. For our Lord and the Lord is the Church. O God, who in the offerings presented here provide for the twofold needs of human nature, nourishing us with food and renewing us with your sacrament, grant, we pray, that the sustenance they provide may not fail us in body or in spirit through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Up Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father of mercies and faithful God. For you have given us Jesus Christ, your Son, as our Lord and Redeemer. He always showed compassion for children and for the poor, for the sick and for sinners, and he became a neighbour to the oppressed and the afflicted. By word and deed he announced to the world that you are our Father and that you care for all your sons and daughters. And so with all the angels and saints, we exalt and bless your name and sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God who love the human race, and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, 
that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. With the third acclamation, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ your Son, our Saviour, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favour on this oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your Church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Anthony, our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and the entire people you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labour and are burdened. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Apostles and Martyrs, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Let us pray for the coming of the kingdom as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin 
and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope of the coming of our Saviour Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory is yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. As this reception of your Holy Communion, O Lord, foreshadows the union of the faithful in you, so may it bring about unity in your Church, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless us, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let's go in peace.